What the heck is Instagram and how can it help your medical practice? Today we're going to talk about some Instagram basics. When you're a doctor multimedia client, our marketing campaigns improve your patient's experience, enhance your online presence, and increase your practice's bottom line. Hey guys, Praz Murthy, CFO and co-founder at Dr. Multimedia, coming at you with another one of our marketing jam sessions. There's a lot of talk these days about Instagram. You may be on it personally, you may not. Your practice may be on it, you may not. And a lot of our clients don't know what it is, don't know how to use it, and are definitely confused on how it could benefit their medical practice. So today we want to go over what Instagram is, what some of the words mean that people use when they're talking about Instagram, and how you should be thinking about social media and Instagram for your medical practice. So what is Instagram? Instagram, shortly put, is one of the latest social media platforms that I think arguably is the most popular. It doesn't have the most people on it, that's still Facebook, but in terms of what is current, you know, uh, popular right now where most of the people are, especially the younger generation, Instagram is going to be the answer. It's where they seem to be engaging the most often. Now, don't worry if you're just catching up to Facebook and you're thinking, holy crap, I now have a whole new platform to learn. That's okay. It's not that you're slow, it's just this is how things go. So I like to joke with my clients, the moment that we're on Facebook is the moment when all the kids leave because you can't talk about what you're doing this weekend as a teenager if your mom and dad are on the same social media platform and can see, right? So you need to go somewhere else where you know there's not the older generation. You can um, post freely, you can represent yourself, you can interact, and especially today's teenagers, this is almost their primary method of social interaction is through their mobile phones and through social media platforms. It's how they connect with each other. So. This isn't a surprise or some wave. The second you truly get on Instagram, likely the kids will be somewhere else. Don't worry about it. But because Instagram is rising in popularity and more importantly in engagement, it is time to confront it for your medical practice and creating a business account. So Instagram is a new social media platform, quote unquote new, but the focus, unlike Facebook, which was on having friends and seeing what everybody's up to, the Instagram platform has a more visual focus. So it started with pictures. You may have heard terms like filtering a picture or putting a filter on a photo. That's because when Instagram first started, you could share a picture and you, can, you could edit it and spruce it up and make it look really cool and then share that with people. And that's kind of where some of that terminology comes from. Since then, of course, it has grown to have a lot more capability as any Instagram user knows. And now we're talking about videos and stories and going live and things like that. But at its heart, it was meant to be a visual platform. So on Facebook, you might scroll through and see what people have to say or see what status message they had or what comments they had. Have. On Instagram, you're typically scrolling through and looking at what photos people are sharing or watching what videos. And absolutely, there is copy. We'll get to that later. But it's meant to be that visual platform. You're not really seeing what people are saying. You're seeing what they're doing or what they're sharing. So that's a little bit of what Instagram is. As a business owner, what you need to understand is that marketing goes where the people are. So whether it was radio, television, um, then the internet, Google, Facebook, now Instagram, right? Wherever kind of the masses follow, that's where your marketing has to go for the simple reason of you want to reach as many people as possible. And rather than waiting for them to come and engage with you on your website or at your practice, you try to go to where they already are and introduce yourself or make yourself known. Just basic marketing you know, concepts so if we're telling you, hey, Instagram is where people are spending most of their time, then by definition, your marketing needs to start to incorporate Instagram, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So another important concept when it comes to Instagram to understand is followers. So the rough equivalent is that when you had a Facebook page, people would like your business. People would like your business uh, page on Facebook, and the idea was if they do that, then when your business shares information, then all the people that liked it will see that. Now, of course, that's debatable with changes uh, at Facebook in terms of how they display your content, but that was the idea. 
So a lot of us are pretty comfortable with the phrase like, like us on Facebook or like my page. That's become part of the normal vernacular. Now with Instagram, it's not likes, but it's followers. So when you create a page, when you create a business account, you can have followers, people that want to see what you're doing and choose to follow your page with the tap of a button. And it's the same concept. The idea is that as you share content and post pictures and post videos, the people that have already said they want to follow your page will see that content and they can learn about whatever you're up to or read your message or see your video um, and so on. Again, debatable with new changes going on, but that's kind of a more advanced topic, but that's the concept. So just like you wanted everybody to like your Facebook page, now you want everybody to follow your Instagram account. And Instagram is a little more oriented towards sharing everything that's going on and telling people about what you're up to or what you're doing. So the more people that you get to follow it, if you could get all of your patients following your Instagram account, now you have a new platform where they already are to spread the word about what's going on with you and your practice. So once you have followers, now comes the question of what thing, kinds of things can you do on Instagram? What ki kind of content can you share? On Facebook, you know, a long time ago it was you would post a message or a comment and everyone could see it. Uh, then you could share pictures, then you could share videos, then you could do photo albums, etc. Right? So on Instagram, there's some more vocabulary to learn. There are posts, there are stories, there's IGTV. Um, and there's even going live. So let's kind of tackle that in order. Posts are what you see most frequently. It's what a page chooses to share, whether it's a photo or a video. Um, usually there's some production that goes into that, making the picture look really nice or filming the perfect video. And then you put it out there. The post goes on your Instagram page. So if someone is on Instagram, on your Instagram page for the first time, they can see all of your previous posts and then they can choose to follow you to see new posts that you put out as you put them out. Now there's, so there's that concept and that's kind of what I think most people are used to when they're scrolling through Instagram, you're looking at posts and posts can be photos. Posts can also be videos now and you can, you can even have posts that are multiple photos. So I don't want to confuse you, but all of those things are considered posts. Now there's a concept of Instagram stories. If you're familiar with Snapchat, this is kind of the same idea for a, with an Instagram story. If you're not familiar with Snapchat, don't worry. On an Instagram story, what you can choose to do is you can share things to your followers. Generally speaking, they're going to be short video clips and they can be moving video or they can be still video. And the idea is it makes it available to the people that are following you for a limited amount of time, roughly 24 hours. So let's say we wanted to um, do a story about us uh, filming this podcast and, and this jam session. So what would happen is uh, Matt would grab his phone, he would grab a little bit of video, maybe scroll back and forth uh, what's in the studio, and he would add it to our story. What that would mean is that any of our followers could click on the button and they could see what we were up to today. And after 24 hours, they disappear. So it's kind of this temporary thing that's just floating out there uh, on the internet. And tomorrow night, if they check, they wouldn't see it. They wouldn't see the story anymore because enough time had passed. So it's meant to be this thing that you share, whatever's going on, what you're eating for lunch, where you're driving to, you're working out. You share little snippets of your life um, or your business and people that are paying attention in real time can check it out and see what's going on and then it kind of disappears. So it's not like a post, it's shared forever for people to look at in the future and it is meant to be this kind of fun way to show people what you're seeing and what you're doing. So as a business, you can you know, show off interesting cases, you can um, show your staff, you can show your business, the weather, local sports teams. It's meant to be very current and it's meant to be very quick. There's not as much production that goes into sharing your story. There are of course lots of options and things you can do with it. And you, if, if you're familiar with Instagram, you'll see more and more features as you go along. But at its heart, you're sharing in real time what's going on. Now, there's also IGTV, which I'm only going to talk about briefly, but the short version is that outside of your post, or if you do a video as a post for Instagram, right now you're limited to a minute you know, of content because it was meant to be picture related and quick fire things. But you can also share longer videos and they would go to what's called IGTV. 
The short version, um, Instagram wants you to watch things on their platform. The mobile phone is the new television. It's what we look at for large chunks of our day to be entertained. And so it's a way that you can share longer videos through Instagram, touch on it more at a later time, but know that there is such a thing as IGTV. It's different than posts and stories. And then lastly, you can go live on Instagram. So a story, remember, is something you can share in real time. Going live on Instagram means you literally turn on your camera and everyone on your page who wants to watch can see what's going on live action and then of course they can watch it later if they wanted to, kind of like a replay. So if you have a special event, if you're doing a drawing for a raffle, if you are having a birthday celebration, you can go on Instagram, you can go live and people can see this um, from wherever they are by clicking on you know, your live feed and it's kind of a way to, um, well, for better words, FaceTime with your followers. They can see what's going on through your phone. So once you understand how to post on Instagram, the question becomes what types of content should you put on Instagram? Well, what do you do? You've just figured out how to post on Facebook. You feel you're getting the hang of it. Now there's this completely new platform. You know, what the heck is going on? So, Couple of key lessons when it comes to Instagram content. Facebook started on computers and obviously is all over mobile phones now, but most people, especially in the early years of Facebook, would log on to their computer, go to the internet, sign on to facebook.com, you know, and then scroll through and see what's happening. So there was a lot of activity or a lot of time spent on Facebook sitting at a computer. Instagram is almost exclusively mobile phones, right? People are using the app on their phone. You can go to Instagram.com. I'm not sure that anybody does, and you didn't even used to be able to do that. But you go to your Instagram app on your phone, and so you're engaging with people through their mobile devices. So you might want to consider screen size. You might want to consider what people are doing when they have their mobile phones out, and also just the, the shorter attention span that goes along with being on your mobile device and what you're looking through. So. Generally speaking, what you're trying to share is, in my opinion, insight as to your life. So if you're a, just an Instagram person, you know, it's just a personal account, a lot of times you're sharing what you're doing that day, where you're traveling to, where you're eating. You're kind of trying to share with your friends and followers what you're up to. A business account operates much the same way. You want to get messages out. Um, Obviously, it's a visual-based platform, so the more attractive the picture, the more interesting the picture, the more engaging it is, right? The words are just a little tiny piece that go below the picture or the video. And then these days with video, you want to share a lot of kind of moving imagery that gets people to stop. And if you can visualize it, I'm sure we'll throw a screen share on here. When you're thumbing through your Instagram feed, you're seeing large square chunks of your screen that are what someone is sharing and they're kind of flying by. And especially if you watch a younger person scroll through, they are flipping through at an incredible rate and then they're stopping or pausing um, when they see something interesting and engaging with it. So ultimately, you want to share things that look good and that are interesting to other people. So if it is a low quality photo, um, if the lighting's really bad, if it's a video but the audio's really loud, you know, things like that are gonna make a big difference because you're competing for just mere fractions of seconds of people's attention and then they're hoping that you engage with them. So when you're producing content, you wanna remember they're interacting with you through their mobile device, they're probably moving really quick, and then consider where they might be, you know? Um, admittedly, I'll check Instagram when, if I'm stuck in traffic, or I'm at a red light and it's gonna be a minute or two. I might pull out my phone and thumb through. Um, if I'm at home before I'm going to bed. If I'm somewhere where, you know, I'm just kinda idle for a few minutes, um, like maybe I'm dropping by someone's house and um, I'm letting the dogs out to run around for 15 minutes, right? That might be a time where I might grab my phone and see what's going on. Um, there is that kind of mentality um, where you're taking a quick break at work. It's, it's usually, in my experience, kind of these quick bursts of activity and then you're looking to see what's going on. And of course, people are getting notifications and getting interrupted all the time and there are ways to go about doing that. But generally speaking, it's gonna be very quickly 
consumed content. The people won't spend more than a few seconds on a picture, won't spend more than a minute on your video if they even watch it the whole way through, which probably isn't happening. So when you look at when you consider what should I be posting on there, have that quick fire concept in mind where okay, if it's only going to be consumed for a second or two, I don't need to stress out too much about what it is. You know, consistency and quantity are going to be more important than getting the perfect picture because a lot of people aren't going to see it. And then one thing to consider with your content is when you go to your business page, you can kind of see all of the posts in little rows and that will give someone an immediate impression of what kinds of content you have, what you're posting, what you're all about. So for example, if you're on Instagram, go to Dr. Multimedia's Instagram page and just look through the past posts in bulk and you'll get a very quick idea of what we post, how often we post, uh, the quality of our content, the quality of our video, the quality of our photos. It, it creates an initial impression. If you're interested by what you see, you may click the follow button and now you're gonna consume our content in real time. So as a business, keep that in mind that it's a little bit different than Facebook friends and family and all of that wanting to know what you're up to and a little bit more about scrolling through and seeing what's interesting or what's useful or what catches someone's attention. Once you have content going out on Instagram and as we talked about one of the keys to content is um, is consistency and quantity. Now the purpose of all of this is comments and interaction. You don't just want people seeing your content. I mean that's better than them not seeing it. But your ultimate goal is to get people to interact with your content. And they can do that by liking um, or hearting if you will your post. You can double tap on a post to signify that this is something that you like and uh, that you approve of. And But more importantly you can leave comments so someone can leave a message for you. Um, they can direct message your account so they can see that you have things going on. They can send your business a message. Um, so these are different ways of actually interacting with the, what you're putting out there. So that's actually a really important part of what's going on today with Instagram. So a lot of times, you know, having an open-ended question, posting something that might deserve a congratulations or a good luck, where your patients might want to take a moment to say something to the practice or the people at the practice as it relates to what you're posting. So the classic one is a happy birthday, right? So if you post a happy birthday picture or video for one of your staff members, just by default, people that follow your page are often going to want to say happy birthday. And getting that comment and that interactivity really, really, really important for the future of your Instagram presence and something you want to focus on. Meanwhile, you can flip it in reverse. You can go and you can comment as your business on other people's pages, other businesses and other people. And if you go out and you can you start conversations or you leave notes on people's pages, you can get some interaction back and then they may in turn return the favor um, on your page. So, you know, with my practice growth pros account, I will often go on to other business pages that I see and leave them a comment, tell them that they're doing a great job or offer a suggestion. These aren't people I know, these aren't people that know me, but I'm interacting back and forth with different accounts out there to encourage that and actually use social media to be social, right? The, it's a platform that's supposed to connect people. So a lot of times we think, especially as a business, social media, I need to just put stuff out there, put stuff out there, put stuff out there, and my job is done. No, you, the whole point of it is to be social with other people and interact with them in a way that's comfortable to them and one that your business wasn't previously doing.